while the rest of Japan is waiting for the blooming sakura, here in Hokkaido are freezing our asses off. Well, let me show you how do we survive the winter in Japan. First of all, before even coming to Hokkaido in the winter, be aware that your flight might get cancelled, because the weather in Hokkaido can get pretty extreme. You know what, it's not all horrible when it comes to the winter in Hokkaido. Actually, there is an advantage. Let me show you this. So we have a bunch of snow in front of the house, and what I'm gonna do is use the snow as a fridge. Piece of uh, pork here, piece of chicken, Easy. A beer. Easy peasy. Japanese. While the snow outside keeps our ingredients fresh, inside of Hokkaido's dining room, you will discover the warmth and flavor of the hot pot. Trust me, if you want to keep warm and have a full belly in Japan's winter, you gotta try Butashabu, a hot pot featuring thinly pork cooked in a savory broth along with vegetables such as cabbage, mushrooms, and tofu. You dip all that goodness in various sauces and the taste is amazing. A good advice for the winter in Japan is definitely not to do the dumb shit that I'm doing right now. Well, that's pretty obvious. You don't want to fall and break your back, right? The amount of foreigners that I see in Hokkaido falling left and right is pretty ridiculous. So maybe it sounds a little bit silly to give you an advice when it comes to that, but you still need to know how to walk in Hokkaido. My advice? Just walk like a grandpa. Slowly. Like this. That's how you keep safe, trust me. And if you're still afraid, there is something pretty cool and simple that can actually save your life. And it's the gravel. I'm gonna show you. The roads can be literally frozen, so the gravel is essential. And yeah, you can walk pretty easily. So if you ever wondered when you're in Hokkaido, what is this black little dots? It's something that prevents you from falling. Another thing that can help you is proper winter shoes that you can get for only 3000 yen. Definitely get a pair. I guess you would think to yourself, snow in Japan? That's crazy. Shouldn't be like that much snow. If that's your guess, you are wrong. So I live in Sapporo and the average annual snowfall apparently is around 5 to 6 meters. Two years ago when I was driving to, I don't remember where, in the snow, I saw this. Literally here, there used to be a house and the amount of snow that accumulated, accum accumulated on the top of the house just crushed the whole house. It was crazy to see this whole thing just crumbled. You can see part of the part of the roof is still kind of like there. Each year there are literally casualties from the snow in Hokkaido. So be careful. Be careful not only because of the amounts of snow, but also those frozen katanas. The winters in Japan are not crazy cold. For example, I live in Sapporo and the worst that I experienced was something like uh, minus 17. You have places in the north that can get to like minus 30. But if you're still afraid to freeze when you're just walking around, you have this. So the vending machines in Japan offer you hot drinks as well as cold. Look, you have here Tsumetai, which is cold, and you have this one, which is red, and it says Atakai. So, shall we get some coffee? Warm coffee. I still cannot see anything because of because the snow is reflecting the sun, and I have bright eyes. It's very problematic sometimes. Not bad. Well, I mean, I'm not a coffee person, so... But try it if you're in Hokkaido. Tell me what you think. <laughs> oh my god. You can barely see, actually, because of the snow. And it's unbelievable because a few days ago it was 10 degrees plus. Oh my god. Well, one of the things that can help you to survive in the snow in Hokkaido is if you have a car and you definitely will need a car if you want to see some hidden gems in Hokkaido I don't know where is all the equipment but when you have a car you should definitely you should definitely get those ones up because they can freeze and then it's a little bit of a problem it takes time to unfreeze them Way better. In order to proceed with life, we need to get some gear. Cleaning time. 
look, that's what happens when you don't have gloves. So make sure to buy gloves. Don't be stupid like me. Now the stove is the true lifesaver in the apartments in Japan. So basically in Hokkaido, almost every apartment got those. And it's really awesome. You just put it on the maximum heat. And my house is not the smallest house, which by the way, I made an apartment tour. It's gonna pop up right here. So it's not the smallest house in the world. And after opening all of the doors, put the heat on maximum, it can get really hot here. And there is another use for the stove. You can warm your tea. The water in the pipes in the winter can actually freeze if you're not gonna heat the whole house 24 seven. But because I wanna save some money, I'm just turning off all the water in the house before I'm going to sleep. Smart. In front of you is the Yuse Tsuki, a snow melting device that is built underground. I'm gonna show you how it works. In Japan, yukikaki refers to snow cleaning. So much fun! In cities like Sapporo, where snowfall is heavy, you'll find numerous snow melting devices near buildings and roads, alongside heavy machinery working day and night to clear the streets. So apparently, people take a lot of pride into this snow cleaning activity in Japan. So much so that I heard that in Hokkaido, there was this case, one of the neighbors got very upset that his other neighbor was throwing snow into his um, area. He was so upset that he ran over his neighbor with this snow cleaning machine. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he actually killed him. So yeah, that's pretty crazy. They take the snow cleaning here pretty seriously. After some hard yukikaki labor, one of the best things you can do in Japan in the winter is just go to an onsen. For 1000 yen, you can chill the whole day in this hot spring. So it will include resting place where you can receive massage, restaurants, and even some manga. The onsen itself will include some very nice hot water, very healing nice hot water, old water if you want, a sauna, usually a place where you can stay outside and just chill with some cold wind but you're inside of the hot water it's just an amazing feeling and you can literally chill there the whole day i personally love it uh, i miss onsen well hopefully you guys learn just just subscribe okay